Sky is so high. If you don't know how to fly, aim for laser to make you fly. Sky is so high. If you don't know how to fly, aim for laser to make you fly. Here we go. So today we'll be taking a subject. Not a subject. The introductory part for uh, mass and balance. That is, uh, we'll be taking weight and balance. Motion. Uh, Some of the augmentations. All those problems. Theories. I'll give you a startup and uh, give you a theoretical knowledge about what is mass and balance. Uh, I think we have to do a couple of manual load sheets before we uh, move on to the dispatch point of view. So that you will get an idea why and what is the purpose of collecting the zero fuel load from the uh, mass and I mean, sorry, the load control team. You guys can see the screen. Is it clear? Yes, so, sir. Yes. Okay. So, starting with the introduction part. So the main uh, reason for this uh, topic is uh, we are going to understand. What is the compliance with the weight and balance limits of an any aircraft? Uh, it's critical to flight safety, and we will also see the maximum weight limitations without compromising the structural integrity of an aircraft and adversely affects its performance. We will also see the uh, operation with the center of gravity. That is uh, how the center of gravity changes throughout the aircraft. How we will uh, improve the uh, it is a fuel efficiency of an aircraft through load sheet. So, regulatory requirements for a load sheet, we need a training and qualification records. That is, uh, we have completely trained you with this much number of load sheet trials. And uh, you also need, uh, taking this course will uh, teach you what how to do a load sheet. But for uh, doing an actual load sheet, you need to go to the uh, particular airline and they will teach you what is their aircraft types, registrations and all. So basically, we will uh, give you uh, a common idea about uh, how to do load sheets. We will do a couple of uh, manual load sheets also. Then, uh, so for regulatory requirements, we will have a load control process, must have an audit trail for each departure. That is, uh, you will keep a detailed record of what under information you have collected for that uh, particular load control. Then weight and balance record must be retained. The operating airline will identify specific loading positions. So for particular airlines, if you see, uh, for example, Etihad, if you're taking Etihad, uh, they have a priority of a minimum fuel uh, burn. So that is uh, high fuel effic efficiency is what they expect. So what they have said that they need at least uh, high density cargo or baggage towards the aft and low density cargo or baggage towards the front. That way they'll have a little bit, uh, the CG will move a little bit towards the tail, which will give them a uh, very uh, less consumption of fuel for takeoff. So each and every airline has their own uh, policies regarding uh, how the planning should go or how the uh, cargo should be posi uh, cargo should be loaded and uh, how uh, what is the limit of each cargo height in the hold or compartment and how much weight should be there in each compartment. So this will be uh, explained. That is when you go for a particular airline training, they'll teach you what is their policies. So we'll go, we'll take this subject in general and I'll give you some hints about uh, what each airlines are expecting. So this is the regulatory requirements they need. So these are the things that we are going to cover today. That is one is aircraft familiarization. We'll start off with an Airbus 320. Uh, what are the forces acting on it? That is, what are the four forces that's acting on it? Then what are types of weight we'll take for calculation? Type of fuel that we'll take for calculation? What is the principle of balance? That is how we'll uh, find out whether the aircraft is in uh, safety, uh, safety, uh, safety CG. And uh, what is their uh, uh, change of CGs and uh, how it is affecting the aircraft balance. Then we'll have load control and distribution, that is uh, the type of messages uh, 
then what and all uh, dangerous goods or uh, a special loads what kind of special loads are there uh, what types of special loads are there that we'll see uh, along with this and the messages what is the message that we pass on to the next sector for their planning or maybe say for a transit flight you are passing it for the next sector so that uh, the load sheeter in the second sector get the details of the transit get the transit uh, count and uh, prepare for the next load sheet so aircraft familiarization uh, we will be starting with the airbus 320 which is an air bodied aircraft consists of uh, short to medium range so what does short to medium range means uh, it's the distance traveled say about uh, 7000 to 8000 kilometers in single stretch uh, about full tank fuel so it can go fly up to 7000 to 8000 so even though this range this kilometer difference will vary according to each airline for example if you take air india it has 180 seats and uh, it flies about uh, say about 7800 k 800 kilometers whereas if you go for air arabia which has only 168 seats it flies more time of 8500 kilometers so that difference come depends upon the payload that's on the aircraft uh, so i'll tell you how that uh, payload variations uh, creates the range differences so it's a narrow body commercial passenger twin engine jet airlines manufactured by airbus uh, for now we'll be starting with airbus 320 we'll move on with the uh, 737 later on so these are the service points that is we'll have a electric power reptacle that is right under the nose an aircraft nose gear will have a small uh, door not a door a cabin socket to connect the gpu so can anyone tell me what is a gpu what do they mean by this word gpu any idea uh, ground power unit yes exactly ground power unit so what ground power unit is used for don't know sir so i think it is uh, used for push back uh, actually no the ground power unit is uh, the aircraft has uh, um engine at the tail you can see this tail portion right the tail portion yes sir yes. so that tail portion has got a unit called auxiliary power unit commonly known as apu so that apu provides electricity for the engine start for the air condition air conditioning inside the aircraft and the lights and switches so these three is being controlled by the apu when it's in flight so apu is the is a kind of generator that uh, generates this power for the aircraft inside that is the lighting and ac is handled by this apu so when it's in the ground you know apu drinks about about uh, for 1 hour it drinks about 200 kg of fuel 200 kg of fuel is been drinking by an airbus 320 uh, apu so to avoid that the uh, ground supplies uh, this gpu unit to the aircraft so that instead of burning 200 kg you just need to burn another you just need to burn only 80 kg with the ground power unit so when you burn that you will you are saving about 120 kg fuel which you are putting to the aircraft so that point is uh, gpu will be providing electricity to the uh, aircraft that is all the lightings then cockpit uh, lights all will be uh, functioning with this gpu unit next we have the aircraft grounding that is there's a tie down in case uh, the aircraft is not moving you will be tying down the aircraft to the ground in case of bad weather you know um, we can't just leave the aircraft with the cones so we'll be grounding we'll be tying it down to the ground uh, to make sure that uh, no heavy winds will cause the aircraft to uh, just take it off then we have the seat that is portable water drain panel normally portable water and uh, toilet will be at the aft that is uh, towards the tail of the aircraft uh, it is said that uh, first you need to use the uh, water uh, that is toilet cut you clear up the toilet and then uh, and 
you put the water, you finish up water, you take the water cut and then they bring the toilet, they clean the toilet and take it. So this is the uh, process that happens for a water and toilet cut and normally these panels are uh, towards the aft of the aircraft. For a 320, it's normally towards the aft. Um, most of the aircrafts have, all narrow body aircrafts have it towards the tail. Then we have the ACU unit that is in between the two main gears. Two main landing gears, we have the ACU unit. So that is the supply that we give for aircraft for AC. Then we have the air starter connected. Right beside the ACU unit, we will have another uh, connection that is the air starter. Air starter is just for engine starting. Uh, no other purpose for uh, air starter and uh, ACU. ACU is to provide AC to the aircraft and air starter is for the engine start. Actually, these three works are done by the APU. Since APU is too, uh, too much fuel consuming, they request for the GPU unit to be connected. The toilet service panel, that's also towards the aft. Portable fill water and drain panel aft. Fueling connector. Fueling connector is always towards the uh, right side of the aircraft. Commonly known as, do you know what are the two wing side called as for an aircraft? What is the right side wing called and what is the left side wing called? Board side and starboard side. Exactly. So, which is port side and which is starboard side? I think a starboard side is left side. Are you sure? No, sir. So, which side is? Which side is starboard and which side is port? Okay. Uh, have you seen uh, passengers climbing aboard the aircraft? Yes, sir. Okay. Which side does the passenger climb uh, into the aircraft? From right, right. Or right. Left or right? Right side. Are you facing the aircraft or you are facing the aircraft's direction? When you are facing the aircraft's direction, which side the passenger climbs onto the aircraft? Left side. Left side. So, to understand that, which side the passengers climb in, that side is called the port side. Okay? And the opposite side will be the starboard. So, these words came from ship. Ruiz. So, ship has passengers boarding from left side and the starboard will be the opposite side. So which side the passengers are climbing, that side will be the port and the opposite side will be the starboard. That is the, these words came from the uh, ship concerns. So, left will be port, right will be starboard. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. okay, good. So, okay. So, that's for the uh, port and starboard side. Then fueling connector and fueling panel. So what I was trying to say about the fueling. Fueling for an Airbus 320 can be done on both sides of the wing. But they are always preferring to the starboard side. Reason? Very simple. Because the opposite side will be having two passenger stairs. That in case there is any safety concern. That is there is any leakage of fuel. The passengers need to disembark the aircraft within 90 seconds. So that time. There should not be any. A uh, block or distraction from any of the equipments. So all the equipments will be doing their work from the starboard side. Passenger boarding and disembarkation will be only done from the port side. Then we'll have the yellow ground service panel. So that's all about the service points. Uh, it's not much of our concern. This is completely going to a ramp side. All we need to know is where is the fuel connector point. Uh, what are the uh, entry and exit points to an aircraft? Uh, what uh, that is? Where is the hold? How much hold does it have? What are the type of compartments? That is the only thing. So service points just giving you an idea of what kind of process happens there. So we'll go with the aircraft weight and balance. So in yesterday's class, I did say about the 
force forces that will act on affect the affect things that will okay so weight lift thrust and drag so can anyone tell me what is weight any all the four points i need to know what is all those four i don't need any clear definitions i just need to know whether you have understood what is weight lift thrust and drag anyone don't worry whether it's right or wrong you need to know it clearly what is weight what is thrust what is lift what is drag sir may i yeah go ahead go ahead the weight is the force of gravity against the weight of aeroplane and gravity which is uh, caused by the earth and lift is lift is the force of air uh, plane flying towards it upward okay and thrust is the direction of motion of in this rudder okay and drag is the opposite uh, friction of air a uh, pressure of air and okay so that's quite easy uh, so what are the reasons for the weight the weight action needs certain reasons so what is creating that weight uh weight in the plane passenger fuel okay yeah okay good the luggage okay. in the plane okay very and nice that combined equipment all that has payload passenger yeah. passenger weight aircraft weight uh, everything that all comes under payload okay what about lift how about yeah. lift Lift is the uh, flying towards or upward the direction where uh, where it gets uh, uh, lift. Okay, <laughs> I'll tell you it much simpler. That is, yeah. uh, lift is generated generated by the difference in the pressure. So if there's a difference in pressure on the wings of the aircraft, lift will automatically get generated. Okay. Okay. very simple uh, but the change how this change of pressure occurs that is thanks to that is that is thanks to thrust so when thrust of the aircraft is increased the pressure on the aerofoils that is on the wings will vary that is the upward that is the top portion of the wings will have low pressure and the bottom will have high pressure which creates the upward force creating lift that's for lift and thrust so thrust is generated by engines that is well known and drag can anyone tell me what is drag a friend here said that it's a opposite reaction to thrust okay that is correct but what is generating this drag who is generating drag difference in air pressure difference in air pressure that is for the lift what about drag drag means uh, that is the opposite direction of thrust so drag means it's like a braking force exactly it is a braking force but the main reason for drag is the aircraft movement that is drag is generated once thrust is produced So, if the aircraft is tending to move forward, there is a backward force that is causing the air uh, aircraft to uh, create another force in the opposite direction. Newton's third law. Newton's third law of motion. Any idea? What is the Newton's third law of motion? Ten standard. I think so. Ten standards. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Exactly, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So, if a thrust is produced, you will have an exact opposite reaction towards it. That is drag, and drag is generated by the aircraft. That is aircraft structure. and the thrust produced 
uh, this drag can increase and decrease depending upon the thrust production. So if the thrust generated is high, the aircraft tends to move forward. If it is not up to the level of the drag, the aircraft tends to slow down. Good. So you guys have a clear idea of what are the four forces. Next, we'll see the flight controls. That is how the aircraft tend to move. We have three type of uh, rolling. One is called the yaw. That is the aircraft tends to move left and right. Then we have pitch. That is the aircraft goes for takeoff and landing. And then we have roll. That is aircraft tends to move. Turn. That is banking. So what is the difference between yaw and roll? In both these, the aircraft tend to turn to both directions. But yaw is normally used in the ground. When the aircraft is running on the ground, you need something to turn the aircraft. So the tail will push it and help the aircraft to turn. Whereas in roll, the yaw will act. That is, the tail rudder will help for the rolling. But normally, the roll is for the, during the flight. So when the aircraft is trying to bank, when it's flying, the rolls will act and also the yaw control will also support so that the aircraft banks much more safely rather than taking a normal left turn just like in cars. Pitch, naturally, the up and down movement. That is the uh, pitch control for aircraft. So these are the three main controls of the flight moves. Now, these are the aircraft weights Excuse that me, we have. Yes, go ahead. Sir, these controls are controlled by pilots or by its automatic? This is completely controlled by pilots. It's just like a car. You know, a car, car can't run automatically. You need someone to drive there. Same way, left and right is done by uh, the person controlling the car. So, aircrafts, all these yaw control or pitch control, all is done by the commanders. They are piloting, they are flying this aircraft, so they will control it. We have uh, another... Yes. And when the aircraft is in autopilot mode, Yes, when it is in autopilot mode, uh, the aircraft will tend to move only in a straight direction. It can't move left or right or roll up. No flight controls, that is no yawing, no rolling, no pitching. It will be going in a particular uh, straight flight. So the autopilot button is to, is completely electronic. It's programmed to hold the aircraft at a particular height in a particular speed. So anything that comes in or comes opposite to the aircraft, that will give an alarm to the pilot. But uh, it can't take a uh, sudden diversion or it can't just contact ATC for another route. So when it's when the aircraft is in autopilot, it will only tend to move straight. In a straight forward, a particular height, in a particular speed, it will tend to go straight. No banking, no rolling. Okay? Okay, so thank you. So, aircraft weights. So, these are the weights that we will see in the load sheet. Starting from the manufacturer's weight. That is the left one. At the top you see maximum zero fuel weight. So, we will come to maximum zero fuel weight later. Let's come to the manufacturer weight. So, for example, a manufacturer weight is the empty weight of the aircraft. An aircraft with all its tires, wheels, engines, and the seats, empty seats, no pantry, no passengers, no one is there. So the aircraft has been judged with such a height, say about, uh, for an Airbus 320, let's take it as 42 tons. 42, say 41,500 is the actual basic weight for an Air India aircraft. So 41,500 is the manufacturer's weight. But we can't accept that manufacturer's weight. Because no seats, no pantry holes, no uh, no spoon, no fork, no nothing. Not even water in the aircraft. So this cannot be used for an operation. So from manufacturer's weight, we'll take it to the basic weight. So how the basic weight is calculated is they'll put on the seats. 
cloths, seat belts, uh, safety jackets. Uh, then we'll have uh, rescue jackets. We'll have oxygen cylinders. So these all will be fitted and will be calculated with another weight. Say about uh, 42, 42,000 or maybe say 42,200. The weight comes up. Then from basic weight, we'll be adding. So now the aircraft is almost ready for operation. But we need some more people to handle that operation. And that is our, who do we need to start up the operation? So if passengers need to uh, climb on the aircraft, who else should be there on the aircraft? Cabin crew and pilot. Exactly. So for a, a standard, instead of going for standard, let's go for minimum. So for a minimum Airbus 320 operation, Say about 180 passengers, we need about two captains and four crews. So the four, the crew will be based on the airlines. If you go for, uh, say about, uh, if you go for Air India, the minimum, uh, actually the normal crew that Air India operates is two by four. We'll have two captain and four cabin crews for 180 passengers. So if you take that for the Qatar Airways, they go with the standard size. That is two passengers, two captains, and six cabin crews. So it depends upon the airline how many cabin crews get inside the aircraft. So captains, cabin crew, and their bags. Along with that, we'll go for some engineering items. In case the aircraft has any problems at the destination, it needs some servicing to be done and brought back to the base. So for that, some extra items like engineering will be taken. And then we'll have the most important thing for passengers, food. We'll take in the food, that is pantry. For a particular, uh, say about 320 aircraft, we need about 1,800 kgs of pantry. So you will be taking up 1,800 kgs of uh, pantry. In that, the total dry operating weight comes to the number 43,000. So any doubt in that? So basic weight. To uh, manufacturing weight is not required. For load sheets, we'll start off with the basic weight. So basic weight of the aircraft plus the crew, how many crews, their pa their weight and their baggage weight plus the pantry, and then we'll go for the engineering. Engineering may or may not depends upon the airline. May or may not we'll have uh, the engineering item. So all these in total will give you the dry operating weight. So the word dry operating weight is that it's ready for operation but it's dry. That is no fuel. Is it clear? Yes sir. Yes sir. So that's for the dry operating weight. Now we'll have a couple of uh, I think this uh, this is not in order. So dry operating weight comes that way. Now along with Along with dry operating weight, we are going to add the passengers, their baggage, and uh, we are going to put some cargo, some mail, and that together is called payload. So when that payload, along with dry operating weight, will give you actual zero fuel weight. So actual zero fuel weight is the aircraft is ready, captain, cabin crew, everyone inside, their bags inside. Passengers, their bag, uh, the their uh, necessary cargo, mail, everything is inside the aircraft. Now, only thing they need is fuel. So, the next one is payload. Payload, I told you, passenger, passenger weight, cargo, weight, mail. Allowable payload, I'll tell you later on because that is a small calculation that we need to do. Uh, maximum weight restrictions, yes. So for every aircraft, we'll have a weight restriction. That is, we'll have maximum zero fuel weight. That is, aircraft plus payload should not increase for this particular aircraft. For example, if you take for Airbus 320, uh, we'll have a maximum zero fuel weight, maximum takeoff weight, and maximum landing weight. So for this three, maximum zero fuel weight is 60 to 500. Maximum takeoff weight is uh, 77 tons. And maximum landing weight will be 66 tons. So this will be the three maximums for uh, any uh, that is normal standard uh, 320 aircraft and that weights 
must not have be exceeded so whenever you are preparing the load sheet please make sure that the weights whatever plan you do whatever numbers you put in make sure the total that is your actual zero fuel weight or your actual take off weight or actual landing weight should not increase the maximums because if it increase the maximum you are almost killing about uh, 180 passengers plus six staffs that's a total of 186 people the aircraft will not survive that crash or will not survive that crash will not survive anyway so maximum weight restrictions very important you must never increase not even by a kg then we have maximum landing weight yes i said you maximum landing weight maximum take off weight maximum zero fuel weight now we have here another one called maximum taxi weight so maximum taxi weight means the aircraft is in the bay everyone even the fuel is on board and including that that is the taxi fuel i told you earlier that that aircraft which is getting pushed back from the bay has to move has to go to the runway so that distance should be calculated and taxi fuel must be included uh, during the uplift of fuel so including that including that fuel uh, that taxi fuel also we will be putting a weight that's called maximum taxi weight then we have allowable payload so for any amount of uh, say about uh, for any uh, payload uh, for any aircraft when you are calculating the payload you need to know how much applicable payload can be taken so how you will find that out that is uh, depending upon how much fuel is required for the sector so for example if you are taking a flight from uh, say chennai to De- chennai to dubai you need about uh, 14 tons of fuel 14 no so 15 tons of fuel 15 tons of fuel is required from chennai to dubai so this 15 tons along with plus you put the dry operating weight of 43500 so you get something around 58500 58500 is the total uh, operating weight that you need not dry operating weight completely operating weight that you will have so along with this operating weight so along with the operating weight you will need to find out what is the maximum payload available at currently for that particular aircraft so dry operating weight changes uh, depends upon the registration of the aircraft uh, the dry operating weight changes uh, depending upon the registration of the aircraft but the payload calculation will be the same so you will be adding a couple of loads and checking it with the take off weight so that you will know which payload that should be applicable so when we do the manual load sheet you will get a clear idea of how to do the allowable payload calculation allowable, allowable payload is just to know how much extra load you can take more that is from the maximum you will be reducing the actual load now we'll come to the point fuel so this is our point uh, fuel ramp fuel or fuel loading these are the points that is for our concern because as a dispatcher we have only this to be noted down so fuel first one is the block fuel or known as ramp fuel that is all fuel uploaded onto the aircraft if captain say i need a uh, ramp fuel of 15 tons 15 tons should be loaded onto the aircraft but when you put it in the load sheet you have to minus it with the taxi fuel and put it in the load sheet otherwise if you put the same fuel into the uh, load sheet the full calculation goes wrong taxi fuel yes the amount of fuel an aircraft burn to runway for take off that is what i said from the ramp to the aircraft take off point will give you the taxi fuel then take off fuel from the take off point uh, from the take off point till the aircraft takes off that is the t- take off fuel to fuel once the aircraft has take off and reached a particular height from that point onwards till the aircraft reaches the destination uh, destination descent point the air uh, the fuel that is consumed will be the trip fuel and then after that it goes for the landing fuel
now contingency fuel so this fuel is carried for additional en route and fuel consumption caused by wind or routing changes this contingency fuel i had given you an idea uh, yesterday itself that is uh, in case you have a diversion or in case the aircraft has got delayed the atc will not give the aircraft the required uh, height that we have proposed for example if we have proposed something around like uh, 29000 feet or 30000 feet there is a very less chance that if we are late we won't get that height we won't that get that altitude and by certain reasons the aircraft got delayed and we are just going out by 5 or 10 minutes the captain which is there after taking off the aircraft will be allotted to a height say 25000 feet that is we were planning for 30 and we got 25000 so the burn the extra burn of fuel should be included for this contingency this is like a backup plan so that's for contingency alternate fuel yes in case uh, uh, the aircraft couldn't land at the destination or we are planning for an alternate destination we need to plan some of the fuel we'll be checking out what are the alternate stations that the aircraft can go if we have a permission for landing yes we will put that in the flight plan we need minimum five alternate flight uh, routes it is uh, five alternate destination for landing and we need to calculate the average fuel required in taking the farthest into the consideration so for example if you are going from here to uh, chennai to dubai and uh, the aircraft can't land in dubai due to heavy uh, traffic and all then you need to find a destination called abu dhabi or sharjah so if you are taking it to abu dhabi it's going to take another 60 or 80 kilometers more so it's going to burn another 60 or 80 kg of fuel and if you are taking it to sharjah it's again going to cost you something around 50 or 60 kg of fuel so this should be included in the uh, alternate fuel plan so that uh, that will be taken also as the ramp fuel so in total when you get it the take off fuel will have the taxi fuel will have the contingency fuel the alternate fuel then in case if the aircraft uh, has very pure poor uh, trim then we need to add something called as ballast fuel that is to ensure that the aircraft doesn't go out of trim for example if you are taking 320 aircraft it's largely to tail heavy normally it goes too much to the tail so we need a maximum load on the forward that is not possible for a 320 aircraft so we need to take the payload to the forward for those type of aircraft but ballast fuel is commonly used in flights for airbus but not narrow body wide body that is 330 aircraft which is a complete nose heavy and if you have very less passengers that aircraft can't take off at that range say if you have about 280 capacity passengers and you just got a 25 passengers on board and you have no cargo so even though you plan the passengers to the tail it's not enough for the aircraft for a safe take off so what they do is they put this ballast fuel onto the tail so 330 aircraft has a ballast fuel at the tail and that tail will give you the trim necessary trim for the take off so is that clear about ballast fuel yes sir okay uh, so that is normally we can't use it but in case of emergency including the contingency even after you have burned contingency and you have a ballast fuel the captains with the respect they'll give a call to the dispatcher and ask that i have very less fuel weather is very bad changed all of a sudden i can't survive more so i'm taking fuel from the uh, tail so when that instruction goes to the flight dispatchers will recalculate and send him another flight plan uh, another flight plan or another trim in consultation with the load control so these both will have to work together so that taking the fuel from the trim should not cause the aircraft to exceed its limits or uh, go out of trim from the cg so based on that the uh, flight dispatch and load control will combine the computer decision and send the required documents to the captain for uh, usage of ballast fuels a fuel loading standard and non standard so for the standard loading it's very simple the aircraft fueling will be done equally there won't be any changes and uh, 
uh, it will be uh, as per the manufacturer standards. But if you are going for a non standard, it will be uh, unserviceable fuel boost pumps and trapped fuel. That is, uh, an aircraft wing has about three sections, so it has three fuel tanks in each wing. For the 320 aircraft, it has three fuel tanks. That is, uh, one towards the uh, edges, second one towards the fuselage, and third one it will be on the center of the aircraft. So they have total of three tanks, and the aircraft capacity is close to 20,000 kgs. So when non-standard fueling comes, the fuel first should enter the wings, that is the outer tanks, and then it moves to the inner tanks, and then it will go to the center. Tank. So when this movement of unstandard fueling goes in, the weight of the aircraft will change, and not only that, the balance and the consumption of the fuel will also change. So, Can guys, is that? Right? Yeah, go ahead. So, what does mean with standard and non-standard? Yeah, so standard. Standard means it's as per the manufacturer's concern. That is, manufacturer will say that it should be equal on all the three tanks. We have three tanks. That is, one is the center tank. Then we have the outer tanks. Then we have the inner tanks. Okay. Is that clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, that is the manufacturer's three main tanks. And when you're filling it, what comes is uh, the aircraft's wing will be loaded first. That is first the outer tank, then inner tank, and then it goes to the center tank. So that is the manufacturer's. That is called standard fueling. So when it comes to unstandard, non-standard fueling, the aircraft's load, that is uh, the fueling standards will differ. That is, we won't be either loading the inner tank or maybe not the outer tank. That will be uh, dependent upon the uh, electronic system that is inside the aircraft. If there is any error, we need to go to completely non-standard. So that is like uh, tanks not filled according by manufacturer standards to unserviceable fuel boost pumps or trapped fuel. That is, if there is any problem with the fuel boost, we will not be able to uh, load it in the outer, then inner, and then to the center tank. So this non-standard will we'll be connecting two fuel ta fuel tanks on two wings. We'll ensure that first the outer thing is outer tank is loaded, and that weight when it reaches about uh, three or four uh, thousand kilos, then from there they'll close the tank, and then send the remaining fuel to the inner tanks. So this uh, will be will be doing it manually actually. When you're going for standard fuel, it will be done automatically. That is, you just need to connect it and start off the fuel. But when you're going for non-standard fuel, you have to manually close each of the tanks, load particular amount of fuel in each tank, and close each tanks, and then send to the next tank, fill it up, close it, and send the remaining to the center tank. So it's going to be a long work. Normally, fueling will take something about 40-45 minutes if you're going by standard. But if you're going for by non-standard, it takes about one to one and a half hours time. Okay? Is that clear? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, guys. Uh, we'll take a 10 minutes break uh, and then we'll come back. Okay? Sure, sir. Okay. We are going to see where it will be acting on an aircraft and how will the, uh, how will the uh, CG variations uh, variations of uh, CG uh, depending upon the weight that is loaded on the forward and the up. So, principles of uh, balance. This is actually uh, for the uh, theoretical, that is uh, for a uh, complete uh, captain's point of view. Uh, for as far as we are concerned, you just need to know uh, what is uh, center of gravity and what is the mass. Uh, so, center of, gravity, center of gravity is the point over which the aircraft would balance. That is the, it is the point at which the entire aircraft weight is well balanced. So this change in CG will be seen, um, that is the load or uh, towards the aft of the aircraft. So how uh, is not known. Only thing we are given is index. That based on this index, we will know whether the aircraft is too forward or too back. Next is uh, mean aerodynamic code, that is mass. So, what does mass mean? The distance between the leading and trailing edge of the wing. That is, in a wing, when you take a cross section of the wing, 
Yes. So we can't use properly. So we can't use the Sir, the, uh, the Sorry, voice is cracking. The voice is cracking. Oh, the voice is cracking. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, first is uh, the center of gravity. So, center of gravity means it's a point in which the aircraft... Uh, the entire weight is so, so that point changes according to the weight positioning of the uh, load. So for a 320 aircraft, we have the forward and aft hold. So in that, uh, the weight moving to the forward will have a, a nose type of variation. So the center of gravity, the balance of the aircraft will move towards the forward. When, we, when you put more weight on the aircraft, the aircraft will tend to move towards the back so that uh, the weight, so that the aircraft balance will be correct. Is it clear? Can you hear it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So that is for the center of gravity. And the next one we have seen is mean aerodynamic center. So mean aerodynamic center. So mean aerodynamic center means it's the uh, cross section of the wing. When you uh, take the wing and when you cross sect it, that is when you take one portion of the wing, the leading edge, that is the uh, head side of the wing to the tail side. So what length, uh, uh, that length of the airflow, that length will give you the maximum uh, weight. So the more uh, MAC, uh, that is MAC percentage, the more MAC percentage it is completely an engineering point of view. Uh, as far as you can, just remember that MAC value increases from more than, uh, say, about 10. In between, the safer limit is from 10 to 30. I think around 20 or 22 is exactly the ideal position. So if it's 22, it means it's generating more amount of lift. That is, it's going to have too much of load on the tail. Keep that single point in your mind when you're thinking about... For is concerned, you just need to know that what happens when the mag value increases and how and how it will uh, react on an aircraft okay is it clear yes sir okay good so let's move on Next, uh, we are going to see what are load control and uh, its distributions. So, first one is load control. So, a person who performs aircraft weight and balance within limits. So, who a load control agent is the person who is doing the weight and balance of the aircraft. That too, in the safe limit. Said you, we have maximum weight restrictions for an aircraft. So, he needs to make sure that the weight, uh, the maximum weight given to an aircraft is within the limit you also have to check whether the uh, max that is mean aerodynamic code is not beyond its uh, capacity limit so there are certain things that load control will check when he's operational and procedure that is each and every time there is a operational that is the standard operating procedure for load control will change depends upon the situation for example if you see that uh, in earlier times when we had no corona and all we had uh, restrictions for cargo that uh, we have the freedom that if the cargo is not going, we can offload it. But in the current situation, they have given us a extra grant that whatever happens, if you are trying to generate something revenue for the aircraft, you need to make sure that it should go. So that is if you're taking consignment about six tons of cargo, please make sure that the, en the entire consignment goes. And for that, the load control have to go through lots of procedures we have to go and check whether the uh, volume of the uh, consignment is within limits or not. So there are lots of things. So for a load control, the procedures keep on changing as per the situations. In this particular situation, they say that you need to uplift all cargoes. That means we have to go and uplift all the cargoes. So there are lots of works. There are lots of groundworks that should be done. 
before when you do such a uh, when you handle that situation then actual load of the aircraft must reflect on the load sheet uh, first we'll be doing the load planning then calculation and then we'll be doing the actual load of the aircraft so whatever you create in the load sheet that should be the actual weight so that the ca- the aircraft that when the captain put it in the system he'll have an idea of that whether the load sheet or and the aircraft are the same so in in the current situation not in the current situation if you go for an airbus 320 the uh, old aircraft or the new aircraft the aircraft is uh, fitted with a self calculative measures in which the aircraft can auto calculate yes craft so if you do any changes in the load sheet the captain will know that is it clear uh, is it clear yes yes sir yes sir so uh, as you were saying uh, when you are creating a load sheet for an aircraft mainly for an airbus aircraft please make sure that the loads that are given into the load sheet are actual because a ca- the captain can clearly catch you if you have done any changes to the load because the aircraft actual load will show uh, the uh, captain can see what is the actual actual weight as per the uh, aircraft has been loaded so he need not come down and check and recalculate he can just uh, sit in the cockpit and check whether the aircraft is loaded into the proper and the load sheet produced by us and the aircraft actual loading is almost same so he will look at a difference of say but 0.2 or 0.3 percentage difference that is okay for him but if it goes of say 1.0 or 1.5 that's going to create a lot of problem so please make sure that uh, the load sheet given to the captain is accurate so next is check in finalizing load sheet and other documents that is before you give you need to check and finalize the load sheet you need to check uh, the sector the flight number the date how many crews uh, and uh, the captain Well, at least uh, nine or fifteen, nine to fifteen points that we need to check uh, before handing over the load sheet to the captain. Then issuing a loading instruction report that we will see uh, in the process. So load and trim sheet. So load and trim sheet. Uh, it is actually not a single paper. It's not a single sheet. It's a two sheet. One is the load sheet. The other one is the trim sheet. So load sheet will be having only the mathematical calculations. Uh, you will be doing some addition subtractions uh, you will be mixing you will be playing with your max max game so that is completely about adding and subtracting and in the trim sheet is about the loading so you will be actually drawing your line you are actually drawing your trim to make sure that the exact that is the ideal position comes within the safety limits of the aircraft so load and trim is actually two uh, sheets one is the load sheet that is completely max calculation the other is trim sheet where you will be drawing uh, lines that is you will be bringing the trim from the uh, center point towards the nose towards the compartment and then you will be uh, taking the trim to the uh, passenger side and then you will be drawing directly to bring it to the ideal position or you can say to the safety position of the aircraft limits so as i said you are real manual load sheets you need to know the three maximums you need to know the three maximums that is maximum zero fuel weight maximum take off weight maximum landing weight uh, for load and trim sheet you know just by theoretically telling telling that uh, load sheet is this trim sheet is this we need to actually uh, work this out so um, how about we keep a uh, Uh, manual load sheet session tomorrow uh, are you guys okay with that sure yes sir so uh, i will be sending you the uh, load sheets and uh, um, trim sheets so you, you can just uh, have a look for look into that uh, you guys could take a print out right yes sir sure sure sir yeah okay then so uh, let's take a print out and then i'll tell you orderly how you have to do the calculation and that way you will have a clear idea of uh, uh, how to do a load sheet and uh, you know taking uh, the markings of the trim sheet also you need to know how it's been done uh, just by simply saying uh, load 
code a sheet and trim sheet and then drawing and all that you won't get a clear idea of what i'm trying to tell so if we do a manual load sheet uh, you will have an idea of what you should do uh, what are the points that you have to think how you will think about your planning so that will uh, give you a spark of what i'm trying to tell so mm-hmm. for now we we'll just go through these so um, this is a standard load sheet Uh, this is a standard uh, trim sheet actually uh, this is a trim sheet uh, issued by the airbus that is this is a manufacturer's uh, trim sheet uh, with all the personal uh, thing so sorry to disrupt you yeah go ahead go ahead so we can't see properly your uh, your slides uh is this slides not uh, eli- uh, uh, you can read it properly or is it you can see it properly okay good uh, so so this is a, a trim sheet that is a manufacturer's trim sheet uh, we will be uh, see the sheet uh, and we'll do it if uh, it's not working out i think we'll be we'll have to but it will i'll tell you how it's done so that we do a manual manual session about this because we keep on speaking about load and trim you guys are not going to get your accounts to be done so we'll do a session tomorrow of uh, manually documents to ma'am and ma'am will forward it to you next we see something right so this is actually a what say the pressure control system that is this will be a printed load sheet the system will be generating all the uh, weights and uh, that is uh, the passenger check in the passenger weight the passenger baggage weight so this will be self auto calculated by the system produce the load sheet so that is completely load sheet computerized that is very easy to handle that will take something about a, you know um, if you look for uh, any airlines you know their system e systems will be different so based on that the load sheet will also uh, the format will be the same but uh, how the process works that will be quite different for each airline but in the case of manual load sheet all the manual load sheets of all airlines are the same because since it's the manufacturer who gives the load sheet format uh, the load sheet will be same the trim sheet may have uh, changes because uh, you know from the manufacturer's weight they are changing into the basic weight so that will show some uh, changes in the uh, trim side but not the load sheet will be same it will be common for all the airlines so this is the uh, sample of uh, load sheet computer right as you can see that uh, here we have load sheet all weights in this is actually all weights in pound but uh, we in india we will use all weights in kgs then we will have uh, from to that is destination the flight number what date the aircraft registration the version of the aircraft uh, and uh, then we will have to do that is uh, the uh, under the load then we have passenger cabin bag that is the over the wing then total traffic load that is the payload then the total payload then dry operating weight that is given by the manufacturer zero fuel weight is uh, the payload plus dry operating weight so uh, i'm not going to deep into this uh, for the next class we'll have a session so we'll have a clear idea of uh, what this all means and uh, what is the zero fuel weight how we we'll calculate that all those things uh, next is the loading instruction report that is load sheet you need to have a plan about where you are going to load uh, what and where are you going to load your uh, cargo and consignment so cargo whether it's cargo or bag uh, for example if you're taking for a 320 aircraft it will have two main holes that is one will be in the forward and the one will be in the aft the forward will have uh, a single hold that is hold one and uh, it will have about three net sections that is it will have three sections of uh, Uh, loading space and then in the aft we will have three compartments that is compartment 3 compartment 4 and compartment 5 so compartment 3 will have two net sections uh, compartment 4 will have two set net section and compartment 5 will have three net sections 
so based on this we will have to plan each uh, cargo or weight a uh, number of pieces or number of weight on each nib give you the total load for the forward and uh, e each compartment wise you will see the load and based on that we will calculate and produce a loading instruction report which will be given to the ram team so once the load control prepares the loading instruction report uh, it will be given to the ram team and they will load the aircraft according to your instructions so in case if there is any change in the instructions the ram should alter the change and uh, give the information to the load control so this is the uh, operation for loading instruction report in case if there is an aircraft that is in case if there is an aircraft that is coming to our station from another sector and it's going to another sector that is for example if you are taking um, an aircraft coming from delhi to uh, chennai and then it's going to dubai so when you have uh, when you have an aircraft coming from delhi you will have something called an offloading information report that is either they will be giving you a load distribution load distribution message or they will be giving you a load distribution message or they will be giving an offloading instruction report so what is this load distribution message and what is this offloading instruction report i'll uh, tell you in the class uh, you know when we are doing it manually so that rather than just keep on seeing it we'll have a clear idea Okay, so this is a manual loading instruction report. You can see uh, how many sections are being there. This is a for a 320-200 aircraft. So you can see there is uh, the door positions in the forward and how transit loading is being seen, how ground load is seen. So we have the cargo compartment. So as I said you earlier, the aircraft has two holds. That is one is the main hold, uh, forward hold. Well, known as forward hole, the other one is the aft hole, and then we have another small door at the tail that is the bulk hole. So main hole is uh, forward, which is, has only one compartment, compartment one, and then uh, the three holes in the aft is compartment three, four, and five. So the access doors to the compartments are electrically controlled, and uh, uh, the first in the forward it will be uh, in position one one, that is uh, position one one will have the door. And in the aft, it will be in position four one. So this will be controlled by a power drive unit that is uh, that is found underneath the aircraft hold door. So where the hold door is, just be there. I mean, under that is on the belly of the aircraft, you can see a small panel where you can open and uh, operate the aircraft uh, hold doors. Rise over the sky. Say it just in a lie. Hold your head high. Here we go. I think we can wrap up this right now because uh, when I'm teaching you this kind of points, I could just usually show you if you have the loading instruction report, you have a clear idea of what locations and what the next job. We will talk about this whole compartment and then we will start off with the manual load sheet. Okay, guys. Yes.